Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to start by giving all praise, all, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line and your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, a Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And in this lesson, I want to go into the change. And what does that mean? The change is talking about once the Most High brings us under that second covenant as he's promised, we're going to have to have our bodies change. Because these current bodies that we're in now are not our final form. This is just a body that we've been given to move and maneuver here in this earth in this, in, in this time here. We have a body in the heavens that is waiting for us. And that's what we have to be brought into for us to fully be up under that second covenant. You see? So, you know what? Before we do that, let's do, uh, let's get this real quick. Yup, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, it says, then we'll jump back to that Ezekiel 36. It says what? For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, a house not made with hands eternal within the heavens. And that goes into what? Our everlasting body, man, our eternal body. You see, we have bodies in the heavens that's waiting on, waiting on us, man. And, that, and those are the bodies that we're going to be put back into. Our spirits are going to be put back into once we're fully up under that second covenant. That's what the second covenant entails. Us being changed and having the law, statutes, and commandments written in our inward part. So we can walk in perfection uh, before the Most High uh, for all eternity. You see? So it says what? For in this we groan earnestly, desire to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Our heavenly body. That perfect body. That body that is not subject to sin. Verse 3 says what? If, if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. And this is what this is why we always complaining and groaning. Because we know and understand that in this flesh that we're in now, there is no way for us to be perfect. You see? We're subject to sin in this flesh, and this is why we have to be changed. You see? These bodies are not going into the kingdom of heaven, man. These bodies are going to be left here, you see, and we're going to be translated into that new, righteous, immortal body just like Yahweh shot before us, man. You see? So let's go back to Ezekiel 36 because this is what the second covenant entails. Let's get this real quick. Verse 24 says what? For I will take you, for, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and and will bring you into the, into your own land. This is what the Most High has promised to do for the remnant of Israel. You see? He's promised to do this for the remnant, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to save us from all the lands he scattered us to. And he's going to take us back into our own land. The land that he promised unto our forefather Abraham. You see? And to receive after him for an everlasting inheritance. That's what we're going to come back into. But when we, when, when we finally are taken back to that land... We won't go back in these bodies that we're in now. You see? It goes on to say, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And this is the Most High talking about taking us and bringing us into that second covenant, as he's promised, man. You see, because we have to, that's, that's how we're going back into the kingdom of heaven. We're going back into the kingdom of heaven and the second covenant, under the second covenant. We're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments written in our inward part. We're going to have those new bodies. 
all that has to happen before we go into the kingdom, man. We're not going in this condition that we're in now. Because if we went in this condition, in this flesh, this this uh, uh, corruptible flesh, it'll be just a matter of time before we end up back in uh, captivity, man. So this is why we have to be changed. This is why we have to be brought into the second covenant. You see? And this is what we're waiting on. This is what we're hoping for, man. To be made perfect like Yahweh Shai is. It says what? Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. You see? Verse 27 says what? And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. When we... <clears throat> When we're brought into that second covenant, man, we're going to walk in the, up under the law, statutes, and commandments in perfection. You see? We're going to be perfect in it. No one, and as as uh, it tells us according to prophecy, no one will have to teach us ever again, man. We won't, have to, we won't, we won't need any teachers because we're all going to be, uh, we're all going to know Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. That's what the second covenant entails. He's going to make us perfect, man. But for us to be fully perfect, we have to be taken out of this body. You see? Because this is what keeps us in trouble with the most high, this flesh. You see, this flesh is the problem, man. You see? So it says what? Verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your power. And we're going to be perfect in that, man. So we have to be changed before we can go back into the land. You see, and that should give you, <clears throat> how can I put it? That should allow you to, to, to not be afraid of death, man. Knowing the understanding that this is not our final form. Knowing the understanding according to what the Most High has spoken, <clears throat> according to prophecy, we have to be changed anyway. We, we need new bodies anyway. We were never going into the kingdom of heaven in this form that we're in now, man. And the prophecy lets us know that. Let's go to uh, yep, 1 Corinthians 15. Now listen. 1 Corinthians 15 and 40. We'll start here. It says, There are there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. You got heavenly bodies, earthly bodies, right? But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another of and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resur resurrection of the dead. It is, sown in, it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. And, 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 and the phase that we're in now, we're in a corruptible phase, man. This is why we still go up. We have wicked thoughts. You see? <laughs> like the Apostle Paul said, man, oh, wretched man who, that I am. Who shall save me from this body of death, man? He also said what? That there, there, there's nothing good dwells in this flesh. Because we're in a corruptible state right now. Still subject to sin. You see? That won't be a thing once we're brought into the incorruptible. Into the incorruption, which are those new bodies that are waiting for us, man. That Yahweh Shah is going to bring our spirits into once he saves us from the lands of our captivities. Lord willing, we be a part of that number to partake in the uh, in, uh, uh, in the first dominion. You see? So it goes on to say, verse 43, it is sown in dishonor because we were all born in sin. We were fashioned in sin, you see? But it says what? It is raised in glory. Because we're going to be made like Yahweh Shai is, man. Yahweh Shai is in his glory right now. Perfect. You see? <laughs> Hasn't sinned. <laughs> Hasn't sinned. At all, man. Just walking in the righteous way. Like clockwork. Second nature. You see? That's what we're going to be brought into. It says what? It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Because we're coming into the fullness of our power, man. We're coming back into the fullness of being gods, man. You see? This is what Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah is preparing, us to, to, uh, preparing to bring us into. A state of being gods again, man. Going back to our first estate when we, when we, uh, we were the Alahayim with Yahweh Shah in the beginning. That's what the Lord is bringing us into, man. We're not going, hey, man, 
We're not going into the kingdom of heaven in this weak, lowly flesh, man. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah is about to bring us into something greater. You see? Beyond all comprehension. It goes on to say, verse 4, it is sown in a natural body, this earthly body, this, this body that's still started to have gas. You see? Can't lose weight. Brothers got sinus, <laughs> uh, 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 getting sick, sinus infection, brothers catching the flu. All type of shit, man. Bad knees, bad backs. You see? Brothers having all type of headaches. All type of ailments in the flesh. That won't be a thing in the new bodies that the Most High is going to put us into, man. You see, all those ailments, all that shit we suffer, all this stuff we suffer here in the flesh, that's a part of the curse, man. And it won't be this way once the Lord Yahweh Shah saves us, man. You see? We won't age. We're not going to get old anymore. You see? We're going to be young forever. This is the glory that the Most High is going to bring us into, man. So it goes on to say, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit because Yahweh Shah is the last Adam and he's bringing us to life, man. You see, and he's going to bring us into the fullness of life once he delivers us according to prophecy. We're going to really understand what life is, man. We're really going to be able to, to, to live as the Most High intended us to live. That's something we're not doing right now, man. Still got the punch in. Got the clock in. You still subject to payments. You see? Got to put in all these hours to just get, to get a few hours of fucking paid time off. This is not living, man. Having your tax, your, your, your check, tax three times before you even see it. This is not living, man. We have no sovereignty. We have no say so on the earth. This is not life. Life is what Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into when he returns, man. You see? This is what the remnant is hoping in. And it all goes back to promises that the Most High made unto our forefathers. So let's go. Let's keep going. Verse 45 says what? And so it is written. Oh, y'all read it. Verse 46. How be it that was not first, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward that which is spiritual. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, listen to this, man. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, man. It is, we are going to be changed, man. It is a must. Just like we have, you can look at your body right now. We got these earthly bodies. Just know and understand that you see this flesh that you're in now. We are going to be changed from this, man. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We shall bear the image of the heavenly, man. We're going to be changed. We're going to be given back our original bodies. You see? Because this is not our final form, man. This weak-ass flesh. Let's see what this says in the NLT. 1 Corinthians 15 and 49 in the NLT. It says, well, just as we are now like the earthly man, the earth, yeah, the earthly man, the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Meaning what? We're going to be made like Yahweh Shai is, man. That's a promise that the Most High has made unto us. You see? This is all a part of that second covenant. This is, a, this is what we must come into to, to fully fulfill that second covenant, man. It will happen. Oh, let's get in uh real quick. Philippians three and twenty says what? For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who shall change our vile body. You see that? Who shall change our vile body 
that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So Yahweh Shai is going to change us from this vile state that we're in, man, to make us and fashion us after his image. You see? Look at that. Philippians 3 and 21 in the NLT. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Because like, what, what did Yahweh Shai tell us, man? What did he tell us, Matthew 28 and 18 it says what and Yahweh came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth because of what his obedience unto the most high even unto death and with that power that's being bestowed upon him he's going to change us and make us like he is man we're, we're going back to being gods man it is a must we shall be changed we shall be changed, man. He's going to make us like he is. You see, and, and, and you got pagan Christians who will read this and, and, and doubt it because they don't, they, don't, they don't believe in the truth of the scriptures, man. You see? Immortal. That's impossible. Ain't that what the scriptures say, though? We're coming into immortality, man. Well, let me say, when I say we, I mean the Israelites beginning with the remnant. You see? <laughs> That's who's coming into immortality. Immortality is only for the Israelites. No other nation will partake in this, man. You see? So 1 Corinthians 15 and 48 says what? And as we, slide, as is the earthy, such are, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So that should that should not have you tied to this flesh when it when it when it really goes down. You see? Because we know and understand that this a this is just a temporary body, man. You see? Oh, what is that? Second Corinthians four. And uh we'll start at seventeen. It says, Well, for our light affliction. And being, in his, and being in his body is a part of that light affliction, which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and that includes this flesh, man. This flesh is temporary. It's, it, it, it's temporal. It's not everlasting. You see? It says what? But the things which are not seen are eternal. And that includes the bodies that Yahweh is going to put our spirits in, man. Those bodies are eternal. They're everlasting. You see? Yahweh is about to upgrade us and we will never die again, man. You see? That's something that's going to be left here in this final captivity. You see? So going back, verse 50 says what? Now this I say, brethren, that, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. This corruptible flesh is not going into the kingdom. So once again, that should give you a, 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 an advantage. You see? Well, that's going to give us an advantage over everyone else. When it starts to go down, and Esau starts to put people to death. Because we know and understand that what? This ain't this ain't our final form anyway. All people who have rejected this knowledge, you see, who refused Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, they don't understand it. Uh, understand that. So when Esau threatens thre threatens them with death, you see, they're gonna bend the knee. Because they don't understand that we have bodies waiting for us, that Yahweh Shah is coming to make us like he is. He's coming to make us God. They don't have that understanding, but the remnant do. So when Esau threatened us with death, we know and understand the way. Hey, we, we're about to be upgraded. You see, we're about to go into a higher existence. We're going back to our first, hey, our first instead of what? Being the sons of the Most High and the fullness of what that really means, man. You see? that get up, this, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding gives us an advantage over everyone else. And that's why the scriptures tell us what? Uh, Isaiah 33 and 6 And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times And strength of salvation 
The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. You see? And the fear of the Most High is what? The beginning of wisdom, man. So we can overcome all these obstacles that are going to be placed before us, man. And that includes the threat of death. It goes on to say what? 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. It's like it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning die. But we shall all be changed. Every Israelite eventually is going to be changed. You see, but it begins with the remnant of Israel. Those who have what? Believed upon Yahweh Shah right now, man, in this time. You see? Those who have believed on Yahweh Shah. It says what? Verse 52. In a moment, and the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, meaning what? At the bleak of an eye, man. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You see? We are going to be changed, man. It's a must. For this corrupt, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. It is a must, man. It is a must that we are changed. Let's get this translation comparison right here. NLT. It says what? For our 1 Corinthians 15 to 53 in the NLT. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. You see that? Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Just like Yahweh Shah, man. He was the first one to enter into that immortal body. You see? And we're about to follow in his footsteps. Lord willing, we be a, a, we continue to endure until the end. But this is what's coming, man. The change is coming. We're not going to be in this condition forever, baby. You see? Verse 50 says what? 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality... Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And we know that when we're under the second covenant, we will never sin again, so we will never have to what? Reap the wages of sin, which is death. You see? And that was all made possible through the Lord Yahweh Shai sacrifice, man. You see, so through Yahweh Shah, we never die again, man. You see, through Yahweh Shah and the sacrifice that he's made for the nation of Israel, we never die again. And that was all according to the Most High's will, man. You see? This is how the Most High wanted to play out from the beginning. We were always going to come back into this state of being God, man, but we just had to go through what? The Most High's word being fulfilled. His prophecies coming to pass. You see? It says what? Verse 57, but thanks be to the Most High that giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. And that's how we win, man. We overcome, we win through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. You see that? That's what it is. It says what? Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know. That your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. So us doing this work, us pushing forth this word for the remnant of Israel to hear it, be sealed with the Holy Spirit of truth. You see, it, it doesn't go in vain, man. You see, going into these same topics over and over again is not in vain because what? We have a great reward coming. And it begins with us being changed and being brought into that second covenant. Then we receive the blessings as the Most High promised. You see? But we are going to be changed according to what the Most High promised us, man. You see? <laughs> this is what it is. This is the truth of the matter. So, Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect because that's what we do it for, man. So, I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let I came out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, 
og bare på bare.